So now we have light as an electromagnetic wave. It turns out, in many, many situations, the waviness of light actually isn't the most important aspect. For example, when light is interacting with objects that are much larger than the wavelength, and that's what we often have in everyday situations, the wave properties don't change things very much. The light essentially moves in a straight line. So we can often think about describing the motion of the light wave as simply looking at how are the various crests and troughs moving around in space. We can do that by drawing an arrow that goes in the same direction as all of those crests and troughs are moving. That arrow we call a ray of light, and this is called the ray approximation. It is an approximation. If we looked at the very fine detail of what's going on, then the wave properties of light become important, and we'll see more of that soon. But for now, just trying to describe the general behavior of light in everyday situations, the ray approximation is actually a really good one. Let's start with reflection. Let's imagine a ray of light being incident upon a nice, smooth, flat, reflecting surface, a mirror. We'll call this ray the incident ray, because it's going to be incident upon the mirror. And this here in the middle is a mirror, and the light can't go through our mirror. Our light must reflect from the mirror. So here's our incident ray. It's coming in at an angle here that we've called theta with a subscript i. That's the incident angle. And we measure that relative to the line that's at right angles to the surface it's interacting with. So there's a right angle in here. We call this line the normal. We've met that before, and it's going to become very important because the light interacts with the surface depending upon its angle to the normal from the surface. So the light's coming in at angle theta i. What's going to happen? It's going to bounce off the mirror, but in what direction? Now again, we should really go out and do the experiment. Get a mirror, put a beam of light on, and see what direction that, that light comes from. In fact, there's a couple of rules that the universe seems to obey. The first one is that the plane, the geometric plane, that's defined by the incident ray and that normal, that's exactly the same plane the reflected ray will be in. The reflected ray won't come out of the screen or into the screen. It'll stay in the plane of the screen. So I can maybe think about where that reflected ray will go. It might come off the surface, as I've indicated there. It's in the same plane. That's kind of our first law of reflection, that the incident ray, the normal to the surface, and the reflected ray are all in the same plane. Now, what about the direction? It's in that plane, but there must be some angle in here, which I will call the reflected angle, theta with a subscript r here. What is that angle? And again, you'd go and do the experiment, and you'd find out that no matter what incident angle you had, the reflected angle was always the same. So the angle of incidence, theta i, always equals the angle of reflection, theta r. That's a nice, simple universe. Now, our nice flat mirror has that property. What if our mirror had a really rough and, and, and uneven surface? It turns out the law of reflection that we just discussed still holds. Now, of course, the normal to the surface will be pointing in all kinds of different directions if our surface isn't nice and flat. At some locations, it'll be pointing out, in some slightly up, in some slightly down. And so reflection from a, a rough and, 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 and jagged surface still obeys the law of reflection, but it's not quite as neat as a nice, plain, flat mirror. Now, we know that we can look into a mirror and see an image of ourselves. So how could we understand that in terms of these ray diagrams? Well, let's stay with our nice, flat, plain mirror, but let's put some object in front of that mirror. The one that we'll use a lot is an arrow. It's kind of nice and simple. We'll use a red arrow sitting in front of our mirror to be our object. Imagine that it's you standing in front of the mirror there. Now, light is coming off that object in all directions. If we've got lights on in the room, there might be some light ray coming off in this direction. There might be a light ray in this direction. Of course, there's going to be some that don't go towards the mirror at all. But we're going to choose a couple of important directions that a light ray will be traveling, and this is called ray tracing. We choose a couple of important directions, and we see what happens to those rays. Now, the one I've drawn in there already, the one we talked about before, it's going to reflect off at the same angle. So the reflecting angle would be the same as the incident angle. What's another ray we could choose? Well, let's choose a ray that actually goes directly to the mirror at right angles. Now, this ray makes an angle of 0 degrees with the normal. So it will reflect off with an angle of 0 degrees from the normal. In other words, it'll come straight back in the direction that it came from. And so although it's hard to see it overlapping there, that arrow you can see is showing us that, in fact, that 
ray coming into the mirror at right angles leaves the mirror in the opposite direction at right angles as well. Now, there are two rays leaving the mirror that we see here. This one that reflected off with the equal angle, and there's this one here that came back directly from the mirror. Now, those rays don't overlap. So it's hard for them to make an image. They're diverging rays. If you put your eye there, however, your eye seems to think that those light rays came from behind the mirror. They came from a direction as if there was a light source behind the mirror. This ray here looked like it came back from over here somewhere. In other words, a ray that was traveling from behind the mirror towards your eye would look exactly like this one that bounced off. And we can do the same thing for the other ray there. It looked like it might have come along from some path behind the mirror here. Now, where those two apparent rays overlap, our eye thinks that's where the light could have come from. And so this intersection point here is where it looks to our eye like the tip of that arrow was located. And we can go and do ray tracing for all the other parts of the arrow, and we would find they would all combine to give us an image as indicated there. Again, this is consistent with what we know. We, we look in a mirror and we see an image of ourselves in there. And it looks pretty much the same as us. There's a couple of things you can tell from this diagram. One of them is the image is behind the mirror the same distance as the object was in front of the mirror. And that's true too. You know if you're standing a long way from a mirror, your image is a long way behind the mirror surface. As you get closer to the mirror, your image also gets closer to the mirror. And that's indicated in this diagram. Another thing is the image is the same direction. So it's upright, the same as the initial object was. It's also the same size. And again, we look in a plain flat mirror. We don't see ourselves magnified. We don't see ourselves reduced. It's the same size. There's another important thing about this image as well, though, and that is there were no light rays that actually overlapped to make the image. It's these dotted lines here where the light ray looked like it came from. And when we make an image where the light rays don't actually overlap, but the light rays are traveling as if they previously over overlapped, we call this a virtual image. Well, in a while, we'll see a different kind of image, but for now, this one is a virtual image. Now, before we move on to the next topic, where we're going to discuss how we can explain light changing direction as it goes from one material to another, say, for example, from, from air into glass, I want you to think about this and maybe have some, some input on the discussion forum. When we see our image in a mirror, a nice, plain, flat mirror, like we've just discussed, we seem to think that our left and right side have been inverted. And if you hold up some printed material, it's hard to read. It's, it's back to front. But why don't we think we're top to bottom inverted? What's so special about the left-right direction that we think it's been swapped around, but the top to bottom hasn't? There's a lot of interesting ideas you might come up with, and I encourage you to share them with your fellow classmates on the forum.